Hi guys, I thought it would be nice to put a face with a name and do a video lecture for my final presentation. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Ashley Roy and I'm going to talk to you today about Marilyn Monroe as popular culture. When I was thinking about what topic I wanted to research for my final paper and presentation, I kept coming back to Fisk's understanding popular culture. Early on, Fisk describes the importance of contradiction to popular culture. I was thinking of several icons of different cultural commodities and just kept circulating back to one, one person in particular, and that was Marilyn Monroe. I knew that Marilyn Monroe was um, an established model, an established actress, and that she was known for her beauty, but I also knew that she was not conceived well by everyone as her look and persona challenged what was deemed acceptable behavior at the time. Jumping into some research, I found that Marilyn Monroe was originally born under the name Norma Jean Baker. Her mother was confined to mental institutions and Norma Jean spent the majority of her childhood in foster care. She married young and was always undeniably beautiful. So in an effort to earn extra money on the side, she began modeling and acting as a young adult. She was eventually picked up by 20th Century Fox around 1946 and it was here that she decided to adopt a screen name, Marilyn Monroe. In a succession of movies, including Love Nest, Clash by Night, and Niagara, Monroe built this 1950s studio image as a love or sex goddess. Monroe's most famous work, however, appears in the late 1950s with Some Like It Hot, featuring Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, and The Seven Year Itch, starring Tom Ewell. By the early 1960s, we see Marilyn is becoming popular both on and off the stage. In May of 1962, she famously travels to New York City and attends a gala where she sings happy birthday to then sitting president John F. Kennedy. In their first runs, we see Marilyn's 23 films grossed more than $200 million. Despite her fame and fortune, however, Marilyn died at her Los Angeles home in 1962 at the early age of 36 from an apparent overdose. So undeniably, more than 50 years after her death, Monroe is still a part of our everyday culture. We see her image appear all over from mugs and handbags to fancy dresses, drag acts, and biopics. Instead of understanding Marilyn Monroe's function as a commodity of culture, I wanted to stress that it was important to view her as popular culture and explain her relationship to everyday life. My research started out by trying to define culture and popular culture, and I ran into some obstacles. One of my sources stated that it is easier to enjoy, deplore, and explore popular culture than it is to define it. This is because, as Fist describes, culture and popular culture are an active and living process. This was important for me to wrap my mind around because if culture is not active, then it cannot change with the times. I wanted to also stress the importance of contradiction within popular culture, and I saw it as an expression of dominance and subordination, and of also power and resistance. Ultimately, I found popular culture to be described as having to do with what most people liked, as it applied to growth and meaning within the society. Here, I found Marilyn Monroe constitutes as an example of popular culture as her professional role as a model, actress, and entertainer directly intersects with the everyday lives of people. Her persona as an attractive yet feminist sex goddess circulated popular meanings of sexuality in the 1950s, and she brought her audience members a great amount of pleasure. I started looking into what life was like when Marilyn was alive, and I found that in the 1950s, there was controversy over the decreasing marriage age, over a growing culture of teen dating, the proliferation of pre- and extramarital sex, and of the female birth control pill. This was important to understand because what resulted 
was a duality in messages being distributed to society. The hegemony reinforced this idea that female sexuality was discreet, it was conservative, and it was only within the marriage. Then we see popular icons such as Marilyn Monroe encouraging overt female sexuality. This competing perspective resulted in a deconstruction of the meaning of what is normal sexual behavior. Through her modeling career, Marilyn Monroe exemplified overt female sexuality through nude photographs, through highly sexual public personalities, and through the roles she played in films. While her promiscuity was widely accepted by the public, it challenged the expert norms about female sexuality at the time. Monroe accrued this additional meaning because of the way her personal life contradicted her studio personality. That is, the public agreed there was more to Marilyn than what official publicity revealed. You know, according to some of my sources, people feel and felt at the time that Marilyn Monroe spoke to their personal concerns. She spoke as a woman negotiating between homemaking and having a professional career. She spoke to women who wanted to feel attractive yet also witty. And then she also represented this inwardly fragile being with a tough exterior. Marilyn Monroe is famously quoted as saying, your clothes should be tight enough to show you're a woman, but loose enough to show you're a lady. This really represented her duality. Even though Monroe was conceived through the media texts of others, and that was primarily men, she manipulated those conventions and complicated and confused the expected image of a sex goddess. She developed pleasure into something that was more artistic. In Marilyn's case, her photographic stills have been described as representing the truth more than other pinups or young starlets at the time because she broke down the barrier between the viewer and photographic representation. Monroe's longevity reveals an idea of us needing her. And I found the extent of her popularity today by fans, curators, academics, and artists to speak directly to the type of audience pleasures she both embodies and ensues. In conclusion, I went back and I thought about these years since Marilyn Monroe's death, how she still holds this title of a glamour queen. I thought about how through this process of glamorization, she turned the ordinary girl next door look into something that was a spectacular fantasy. Her body was something that was seemingly attainable, but also completely out of reach. Monroe had a power to enchant crowds. Her public image was rooted in her body, yet somehow she displayed this image of authenticity. In terms of popular culture, as best described by Fisk, the question was not how Marilyn Monroe actually impacted people, but rather how her influence connected with meanings, pleasures, and identities. My literary research revealed that feminism presents an alternative work to the patriarchy, that while many women suffer through alienation and are prevented from controlling their own existence, because the patriarchal process traps them into this beautiful and mummified state, Marilyn Monroe expressed her body without fear and without shame. The Marilyn Monroe phenomenon was part of a profound revolution that ultimately changed the definition of American sexuality and morality in the 1950s. The meaning of Marilyn Monroe's image was to, to purify sexual pleasure, to look on her with desire and yet remain innocent and natural was something that had not been done before. Much of my research concerning femininity in popular culture addressed the negative implication that cultural artifacts can have on women's identities. However, I found Monroe to be a female sex symbol that fought for women to exert control 
over their own images. In conclusion, Marilyn Monroe's, Marilyn Monroe's endurance as popular culture is linked directly to her conflicted public image. She became one of the most popular sex symbols of the 1950s and early 1960s and was symbolic of the changing attitude towards sexuality and popular culture at the time, but she was the one who resisted and subverted the um, typically accepted definition of sexuality at the time. Monroe's identity was an innocent one that elicited desire, but at the same time, she remained guilt-free. It was through Monroe's body, as it was perceived by the audience, that her popular pleasure was rooted in escaping this social discipline that the hegemony required. I found that while history has proved Marilyn Monroe's star persona as inescapable, her role as popular culture is that she will continue to be acted out she will continue to be resisted and subverted by the people in an effort to integrate her into their everyday lives. Thank you guys so much and good luck with the remainder of the semester.